pre-owned. The drop. All right, Paige, trending this morning. The old Farmer's Almanac is out, and they are predicting a chilling oh. winter forecast. Yeah, this one's brutal. It predicts colder than usual temperatures for nearly the entire country, including the Midwest. Look there at Missouri and Illinois. Their editor says this coming winter could be one of the longest and coldest we've seen in years. And even worse, Oof. they're predicting extra snow in our area. What? Now, of course, there's debate about how accurate these predictions usually are. I'm hoping they're very wrong. Kent, what are you, what are you, what are you going to do about this? Well, <laughs> I mean, you see does, that? It doesn't jive with what with what the climate center is saying. Okay, that's good. In, in, in the setup that we have right now, uh, we're expecting the the southern states to be above normal. We have a 50-50 shot of being above or below normal temperatures here, or above or below normal uh, precipitation no. as well. So it's still. No time it anybody's is a toss up. guess almost. It, it, it almost is a toss up. But there's skill in these extended forecasts. The ones that I paid attention to. <laughs> From the yeah. old All right. <laughs> hey, Shalom, Makim. Shalom. First thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory on it. It's due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Kakadash. Double honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. New as in the gospel, broad lifting up the standard of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, this is the Akiya Mahalaya coming back with another lesson through the spirit. Hey, uh, just real quick, um, it says Old Farmer's Almanac is predicting the longest and coldest winter in years. How ironic and coincidental is that? Which I don't really believe in coincidences, all right, because it's no such thing. Everything is scripted, everything is already played out. It's just a matter of it playing out. But what are the chances of all hell breaking loose and then you got the eviction a moratorium that's getting ready to expire? Uh, Dabu7 has put out a video on it that I have to check out. But uh, what are the chances that coincidentally we're going to have a bad winter and people are getting ready to be evicted, people are losing jobs, people aren't working, people doesn't have the basic <coughs> income or the debt to income ratio to sustain a probable living. What are the chances that now all of a sudden we're getting ready to have this bad winter? Like um, all of a sudden you had this Hurricane Ida that hit the Gulf region. Parts of Philadelphia was flooded. Brother showed a little clip of that. He showed the highway out there in Philly because he's from Philly. Um, and um, it's completely flooded on a highway. Looked like something off The Last of Us. Then you had parts of New York and Jersey because a sister uploaded a video too uh, outside the house and it was pouring down rain. We even had a brief downpour here two days ago, which was probably like 10 minute downpour, but it was kind of just out of the blue. Okay, so what I'm being said, these winters, etc. The dark winter is coming. Okay, they tested that earlier this year with those power outages down in Texas, Missouri, you know, and parts of the Midwestern states and part of the southern states that underwent rigorous cold temperatures, man. I'm talking about, I believe Texas got down to like uh, 12 degrees below. Missouri, we got down to like 15 degrees below. And I know that because um, I was in Florida at the time and I came back here. It was cold as bricks, man. You know, I literally felt like I was getting ready to drop dead just being in the weather for 10 minutes. You know, I felt like I was poisoned or something, man. And then you had blackouts in the city. Only people that had light was the skyscrapers or the people from downtown. The skyscrapers, they, they had lights and those wasn't generators. That was just the skyline. All right. So that was an experiment that they tested because like this guy, uh, Biden said, he said a dark winter is coming. So, hey, how wish I said it? And we're going to get that precept. Pray that your flight be not in the winter. All right. Pray that your flight be not in the winter. So I think they get ready to do something. I think these black outages and these these uh, military drills, etc. I think they're getting ready to do something real, real huge here. All right. And it's going to put a people and a lot of uh, inconvenient spaces is going to put people in a, in a state of mind to just fold under pressure because, hey, man, you getting thrown out in the wintertime, 20, 30 degrees below. You think the landlord cares? He don't give a damn. So, hey, man, brothers, buckle up your seatbelts, especially if you live in the Midwest. It's going to be pretty bad for us out here. But even then, Texas has been getting colder than normal weather. 12 degrees, unusual. Cali. It gets cold out there too. Florida, it gets cold out there. 
Remember one year, man, it was so cold, you had the iguanas that were falling for trees out there because they're they not used to the cold weather. Florida's pretty uh, tropical climate. All right. So it says here, uh, it's predicting a colder than usual temperatures for nearly the entire country. So it ain't just the Midwest. It's the entire country from Babylon. OK, and this is really judgment of the Heavenly Father. It says, including the Midwest, which the Midwest, we always get the worst temperatures. For whatever reason, we get hit with the worst. And yet we're not even coastal. I mean, you got a few great lakes in the Midwest, but nonetheless, we're not even coastal. But, you know, we're mainly north. You know, we, we are closer to Canada than Texas is. And it says here, including the Midwest, it says the coming winter could be one of the longest and coldest we've seen in years. What are the chances that uh, flu season and then, you know, cases and et cetera, you know, makes a lot of sense. Right. How ironic. But anyway, it says that we've seen in years, even rose, they're predicting extra snow for our area. So when you snowed in, you can't go nowhere. You know, it says there's a debate on how accurate these predictions are. But news for this morning, meteorologist Ken Edhart said the old farmer's automatic predictions doesn't jive with what the Weather Climate Center is saying in the setup that we have right now. It says he says it is expected that the southern states would be above normal and our area has a 50 50 shot at being above or below normal temperatures and precipitation. So with that being said, Esau can control the weather. OK, he have something which is called cloud seeding and weather manipulation. He have something which is called harp. All right, for all those people that try to discredit those particular theories, look them up and get information on it. Okay, look up HARP. Look up what it stands for, the abbreviators. Okay, look up um, uh, cloud seeding, genetic, genetically modifying weather. Look all those things up because those things is very true. They even stated that it was speculated during the time of the Vietnam War that America used weather manipulation in rain and heavy rains and winds to try to defeat the Vietnamese, but failed miserably. OK, so look up that information, man, and, and see what you get. And don't just go to Google. Google is set up to block information. They bring out a lot of disinformation. So you have to go to things like Bing or possibly Yahoo. And you got to go to those other uh, uh, search engines or those other algorithms. That's not verily tampered with. You try to go to Google and get your information. You're going to get a lot of gray areas. You're going to get a lot of corporate stuff. You're going to get a lot of. Uh, uh, white collar stuff, you know, oh, yeah, there was a Big Bang Theory. There's no existence of God type information. That's what you're going to get. So Google is not really to go to, you know, go to Bing or something like that, you know, and look up this information. You'd be surprised on what uh, what's been exposed and what's not. But anyway, brothers, man, I found this very interesting. You know, the scriptures back this up. This is Matthews 24. And I'm going to start at verses. Uh, 24 and let's start at verses 19 it says but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days okay so i did a comparative analysis with the uh the niv version all right and it says here and woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter neither on the sabbath day okay it says for then should be great tribulation such it was not since the beginning of the world to this time no no ever shall be all right, so let's read it on the right, the NIV version. It says here, how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Because when the Romans besieged Jerusalem under what they call the Flavian dynasty, okay, or the, the reign of Masada, you had Israelite women that were given birth and it didn't go to their favor because a lot of them didn't take heed into the warning that Yahweh Shai gave them prior before he was crucified. Okay, you can read about that in Luke the 19th chapter. You know, like I was on the phone with my mother just now, and uh, it's weird. She's kind of been calling me a lot. I think she's saying shit because she said, man, it's a lot of stuff that's happening. She said, well, I know you know. So reality of it is she's, you know, she's seeing the prophecies, you know, and I was kind of breaking some stuff down to her. It may be, you know, it may not mean anything at the end of the day, but uh, I asked her the, the main question, and you brothers know what I asked her. Did you, you know what? Did you go pick up Vanessa? And she kind of hesitated for a minute. And back in my mind, I'm like, yeah, she did. But then she was like, uh, uh, I was supposed to. She kind of stuttered. But she said, my job haven't said anything about it yet. All right. So back in my mind, I'm like, either she's lying or she's going to fold. And I just said, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? And then she was like, yeah, I understand. I hear this, blase, blase. But no matter what we tell our people, they're going to do what's best for them. And that's what I said. I said, even if I'm telling them, I'm like, you're going to do what's best for you anyway. 
what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm just here to tell you, you know, and um, she kind of hesitated a little bit. So who knows? Me personally, I think she got the shit. You know what I'm saying? I think she got it. I think she's lying. But, you know, hey, that's her problem, not mine. I've warned her. But anyway, it says, pray that your flight will not take place in the winter or on the Sabbath because we know the Sabbath is a day of rest. You see, and it says here, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Okay, so this is telling you about the unprecedented amount of hell that's coming to this planet Earth. And guess what? We're living right in a time because she straight up asked me. She said, when is the war of Armageddon? When is World War Three? I said, I don't know. She said, well, shit, you look like it's going to happen soon. I said, it can happen any day because we were talking about the MOTB. She said, I thought they was going to administer that during the time of the war or around that time. I said, well, they have to administer that first before the world hum. I said, the war of Armageddon is not going to come until they administer the MOTB. And then she's like, oh, OK, you know, so and I told her everything that's in the world that's happening is geared up to the MOTB. That's what it's all about. Everything else is just side dishes to get to the main ingredient, which is the MOTB. The MOTB is the plush steak that the elites are they're gonna be sitting down and eating, then the most high is gonna kick in the door and drag them out. You know, he's not gonna finish that steak. You know. But anyway, it says here if those days had not been cut short, no one will survive. <laughs> but for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. So you gotta see what the Lord is doing. He's weeding out um the elect. Okay, he's weeding out the elect versus the rest of the people. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this just straight stern. If you are not of the elect, if you're not of the 144, that one third remnant, you are going to be destroyed. I don't care what type of prepping you've done. I don't care what type of military training you have. I don't care uh, what type of survival skills you have, what type of martial arts you know. You can be Brock Lesnar. You can be Michael J. White. Okay? And all that is not going to be enough to get you through what's coming because, hey, the Lord is mightier than all. You see? All right, so um, winter flight. Look it up in Luke, because it was another one too. Uh, Mark thirteen and eighteen. Okay, let's look at that. It's a comparative analysis. It's the same thing. All right, so yep, it's saying the same thing as it said in Matthew. It says, "Warn to them that are with child and give suck in those days, and pray ye that your flight be not in winter, for in those days should be affliction." Such it was not from the beginning of the creation which the Most High created until this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord have shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom the Lord he have chosen, he have shortened the days. So he shortened the time because the elect's sake, because our sake, Lord's will be found worthy. Going over to verse 17 on the right side on the NIV version, same thing we just read in Matthew 24. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter because those will be the days of distress unequal from the beginning when God created the world into now and never to be equaled again. We just read it. If the Lord have not cut short those days, no one will survive. But for the sake of the elect whom we have chosen, he have shortened them. All right. So anyway, with that. All praises and glory and honor that's due to you. How about Shimi? How about Shai? With that, Shalom and a Baba Ball.